Hello Year 11 and welcome to our first Section B walkthrough. We are going to do um, a past paper question um, for the Section B essay that you do at the end of your music exam. In that question you will have to compare and contrast a familiar piece, so one of these set works, one of the eight set works that we've studied, with an unfamiliar piece but one that is hopefully a little bit similar to the one you're comparing it against. So today we're going to start with Bach's Brandenburg Concerto and we're going to do this question at the bottom. I will read it out for you. Compare and contrast the use of melody in the above excerpt from Mozart's Horn Concerto in D with the use of melody in the first 29 bars from the third movement of Bach's Brandenburg Concerto number 5. So to break this question down, we are comparing and contrasting. That means what is similar and what is different about the use of melody. That is the um, element of music that we're talking about in Mozart's Horn Concerto. So that is the unfamiliar piece, the one that we don't know. With the use of melody, so the same element for both of them in the first 29 bars from Bach's Brandenburg Concerto, the third movement. That is our familiar one, the one that we know. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is have a listen to both of these pieces, because um, in the exam you will get to listen to them three times each and you will have the score in front of you. OK, so let's listen to the pieces and follow along with the score. So let's start with Mozart's Horn Concerto. This is the unfamiliar piece that we are going to listen to. Here we go. Lovely. And now let's listen to our familiar one. This is the melody from Bach's Brandenburg Concerto. Here we go. Lovely. OK, so what we need to do now is make a little table comparing the melody from both of these pieces. OK, so what we're going to do now is make a little table um, comparing the melody from one extract with the other. So I'm going to make my little table at the top. I'm going to put bark here, which is the familiar extract and Mozart here, which is the unfamiliar extract. So let's draw a line between them so I can make a table. Lovely, and I'm gonna write on each side the things that I notice about the melody. So when we're talking about melody, we're talking about the organization of pitch, the highlights, the highlights, the high notes and the low notes and how they move. So we can think about the movement. Is it conjunct or disjunct? We can think about, do the notes fit the key? So is the melody diatonic? Does it come from the key or is it chromatic and they have lots of accidentals? Um, does it have a narrow or wide range? Is it triadic? Is it scalic? Um, how is it articulated? Um, are there ornaments or other melodic decorations? Are there melodic devices like imitation, repetition, um, sequence, things like that? So let's start with Mozart's, the unfamiliar one. So let's have a look at how it moves, first of all. Well, we've got an A here, and it jumps all the way up to this D, and then down to A, and then up to F sharp, and then it jumps around quite a lot. None of these notes are really next to each other, apart from this little bit here. So when notes are far away from each other and they leap around, we call it disjunct. So we've got disjunct movement. 
Okay, that's one thing. Um, let's think about intervals. Those are the distances between the notes. Um, what does it start with? Well, we've got A here and then a D. And then when we have the repetition of the melody here, we have an A and a D again. So what's that interval? Well, we've got A, B, C, D. That's four. So that is a four. And because it goes up, it's ascending. So we have an ascending four. Excellent. Um, what else do we have? Well, I can see that the melody starts here in the orchestra. And then when it repeats, we have this solo instrument here, which actually is a horn because obviously it's a solo concerto and the horn is the instrument that's doing it. So we could say shared melody orchestra versus horn. Excellent. Anything else that we could talk about? Um, well, it's in a major key. We can see that the key signature is D major. So let's put major key. Although that's strictly tonality that we're talking about, the notes that the melody is made of come from this key. So actually, it is a major. Let's just focus this a bit better. There we go. It's, um, it's in a major key. Great. Um, it also doesn't have any chromaticism, no accidentals, apart from here, but I think this G sharp, because it's rising to A, is pointing to the fact that we're going to A major, so we go from D major to A major, which is the dominant, so it does modulate later, um, but it's diatonic, because all the notes come from the key that we are in. Um, anything else that we could possibly talk about? Okay, let's leave it like that for now. Let's talk about Bach. This should be a little bit easier because this is the piece that we know. So we've got it here. Um, let's talk about the movement. Well, this bit is disjunct, but then afterwards, all of this is together and conjunct. This is conjunct. Um, there's some disjunct movement here, but this is conjunct. There's conjunctive here and here. So it's a mixture, but it's mostly conjunct. So let's do that, mostly conjunct. Um, what else can we say? Well, this one starts with an A and goes to a D. Hmm. A, B, C, D, that's four. So this one starts with a four as well, and it's ascending because it goes up. So it starts with an ascending four. Lovely. Anything else that we share? Well, this one's got a shared melody as well because it starts here in the violin and then the flute comes after it. So shared melody. But whereas before the orchestra did it and then it was the horn, this one is a shared melody between the violin and flute. But the other one's not finished by the time the next one starts. And we must remember from Bach's Brandenburg Concerto that he uses something called a fugue. So this is fugal because it means the melody is being imitated in one instrument and then the other. Forgive my emails. Um, so we've got fugal there, a fugal structure to the melody. Um, anything else that we could talk about? We could talk about the fact that it is in D major. So we've got a major key again. Um, that's supposed to be an A and a D. Major key. And it's in D. Um, there are no chromaticisms, no accidentals apart from here. That's a G sharp going to an A. So it's the same thing as before. Um, so this one, all the notes are in the key until we get to this little modulation here to A. So this one as well is diatonic. Lovely. Loads of similarities between these two. Um, I can see maybe some other things here. Oh, we have a sequence here. Look, we've got this and it's copied. It goes up and it goes up and it goes up. Lovely. So we could put a sequence in there. Didn't notice any sequences in the last one, but I might be wrong. Um, anything else? That's a melodic device as well, isn't it? So let's put a device next to that. Okay, let's. I think that's enough to be getting on with. Um, what you do then is once you have got your little chart, I'll bring this in full screen so we can see it. You're then going to highlight the things that are the same. So they both start with an ascending fourth, ascending fourth. They both have a shared melody, but the way that they are shared is different 
So this is one after the other, whereas this they are happening at the same time. They are both in a major key, and that key is D major. They are both diatonic. One uses sequences, the other I didn't notice any, and one is mostly conjunct and the other one is mostly disjunct. Great, this is loads of information for us to be talking about for our um, essay. So next we are going to write a paragraph based on one of these contrasting or similar points. Okay, so let's try and take some of this analysis that we've done on our table here and put it into um, full sentences for our essay. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at the essay structure cards that we have on the right hand side um, and we're going to follow this to structure our paragraphs and ultimately our whole essay. Um, we're not going to worry about the introduction today. Um, we're just going to focus on one paragraph. So the first thing we're going to do is make a point. This is um, the part that tells the examiner that you know about music, you can analyse music and you understand that feature. So let's pick one of these. I'm going to pick something that is similar between the two of them. So let's go with this, the fact that they both start with an ascending form. Um, I'm going to start with the familiar one. Always best to start with the one you know. So let's go with this. Um, Bach's melody, because that is the element that we're talking about, starts with an ascending four. Lovely. That is my point. Brilliant. Now I need to provide an example. So a bar number or somewhere in the structure where this happens. So this occurs... in bar one let's say the first time we hear the melody the first time we hear the melody lovely and i'm just making sure that they know that i know i'm talking about melody fantastic um now what i need to do is explain and evaluate so i need to say how this makes me the listener feel or um why the composer has done it um we could talk about um if it answers the question does it fit the period or the style um i'm gonna go with why they've used it so an ascending fourth what do i think about that jump well if i use a big jump to start um that's gonna grab my attention as the listener much more interesting than going to a note that is very close um, and it's quite exciting as well, that big jump. If you think about things like Star Wars and Superman, they all start with these big um, angular leaps. So let's say um, this melodic jump. This melodic jump is exciting. And exciting and helps. Grab the listeners, uh, the listeners attention right at the beginning of the piece. I'm sorry, year 11. I'm trying to keep my writing as um, as readable as possible, as legible as possible. Um, all right. So now I've um, evaluated and explained my point. I need to compare. So I need to use some comparison words. So is it similar or is it different? Well, they both have these things. So I'm going to say similarly because they both do them. Um, similarly. Mozart's piece uh, Mozart's piece begins with an ascending fourth so the same thing begins with an ascending fourth okay where is that found um, so this can be found In the upbeat to bar one. 
because it happens just before the Mosley start. Right, again, at the beginning. Um, so, what is happening because of that? Well, I think it's got the same effect. So, Mozart is able to generate um, excitement excitement at the beginning of his piece. With this treatment of the melody. Lovely. Excellent. Um, Perfect. I think that paragraph might be done. Now, um, you will want to put a conclusion at the end of your um, at the end of your essay after you've done more paragraphs in this formula. So the next time you could do the fact that one is mostly conjunct, but the other is mostly disjunct or they have shared melodies, but they do it in different ways or they're both in major keys and how that makes you feel. Or they're both diatonic. One of them has sequences. Um, so really, really interesting. But using this format, you should be able to copy and paste just and insert different um, facts into these kind of formatted paragraphs and at the end your conclusion can be well actually they've got more um, similarities than they do differences um, or that you prefer one to the other and reasons why um, what I'm going to do now is just quickly analyze um, this paragraph for you like an examiner would so you can see how this structure is meeting the um, kind of mark scheme and the criteria by which we would mark it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is use the um, mark scheme that you can see to the right um, to kind of analyse this answer that we have made, this paragraph, and see how it uh, stacks up against the mark scheme. So, a couple of things we need to look for. Um, we are looking for AO3s and AO4s. AO3 means you make a musical point. So you point out a musical feature that exists in the um, extract, in the music. And then AO4 is when you appraise that point. So you, you talk about why it's there or its effect, what its effect is on the listener, why the composer has put it there, how it um, is relevant to the context, and so on. So we're going to have a look. Um, we've got here, Bach's melody starts with an ascending four. So that ascending four is a musical point. So I've got here my lovely AO3. So AO3, if I was an examiner, I'll do that. Tick AO3, and I'll highlight that just to make it easier. Um, and then I need to back up where I've seen it. So this occurs in bar one, brilliant. And we hear it the first time, lovely. Now I need to appraise it. So this melodic jump is exciting and help grabs, goodness me, let's correct that, grabs. The listener's attention right at the beginning of the piece. Great. So this is saying that it's exciting. That's the effect. And the effect it has on the listener. It grabs their attention. Lovely. So that is AO4. So I'm going to give myself a lovely mark for that. AO4. Great. And tick. And highlight. It's my favourite thing to do. Okay. So if I only did it for the extract that I knew, so the um, familiar one, look at the mark scheme. If you make points about either or both, you can only get to a level two. So you can only get up to six marks. You can see, look, MB, the mark awarded cannot progress beyond the top of this band if only one piece has been considered. So you can only get up to half marks. So you need to talk about both. Luckily, I have. So, um, similarly, Mozart's piece begins with an ascending fourth. So that's a musical point. That's a feature that I have noticed. So that's going to be an AO3. Lovely. And have I backed up that point with evidence? Yes, it can be found in the upbeat bar one. Lovely. And Mozart is able to generate excitement. So he's generated excitement. So I'm appraising that point and what it's done. It's created excitement like I did last time. So um, AO4. Lovely. And then I'll tick both of those. So that is a nice set of four marks that I've grabbed just from this one paragraph. If I did this paragraph 
in this fashion, but for some other points in my um, little table here, I would be doing very, very well because if I did one more paragraph, I'd be getting eight marks. So that's eight out of 12 already. Um, so if we use this format, this sequence to do our answers, we're going to be doing really well. It's almost as if they are bullet points. There you go. First bullet point, musical point and where to find it. Next bullet point, how it makes us feel. Next bullet point is something I've noticed. Next bullet point, how it makes me feel. It's almost as if I've written in four bullet points. Um, you can basically write in bullet points in your exam without the bullet points actually there, and that will be helpful as a way to think about it. Okay, now please try and complete the essay. Um, do your own one with some more of these points with an introduction and a conclusion um, and then maybe take this system and try it for some of the other questions. Okay, Year 11, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. Have a lovely rest of your day.